<laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. This is a video going over the practice test from sections 9, 1 to 9, 4. Remember, test is tomorrow. Okay, uh, number one, state whether the, the function is quadratic, then explain. Who had number one? I do. Very good, John. Um, is that quadratic? No. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. No, it is not quadratic because the second differences are not constant. The second differences are not constant. Actually, you know what? I think I have an answer key up here. So as we go through, I am gonna show the answer key up on the board for you guys playing along at home. For you guys following along at home, I do have an answer key. All right, so uh, the correct answer is no. Good, no, that is not quadratic because the second differences are not constant. Uh, number two, look back there, uh, Hayden Rudder. Uh, that is a quadratic because you see a constant difference, constant second difference of two. Remember, second difference test. You got to find the change within the change. So yes, I would agree that we have a constant difference of two. Okay. Questions there. Uh, one major mistake that I have. Been, uh, seeing people do is uh, taking the wrong difference between negative one to positive one. A lot of people have been saying zero, going from negative one to positive one. Nope, no, 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 no. All right, number three. Who had number three? Uh, seven in the back. Um, good. You got to subtract the four x squared over to the other side. Make sure that's very important because now we can tell whether it is quadratic, which is a yes because it has an x squared term. Good. It has to point downward. Okay, it's going to point downward, not upward, but downward, because it's a negative 4x squared. Good, it's a negative 4x squared. Okay. Um, where's number four? Number four, ah, up here on the board. Oh, did I have all these written out already? Did I not even need to do that? Look at that, it was already up here. Oh, well, that's okay. Where's number four? There's number four. So I, I have the uh, the equation y is equal to uh, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, Liam, I like the points. Do I agree with the points? Let me just double check. Negative 7, 2, 5, 2, negative 7. Negative seven two five two negative seven. Um, I, I like this. That's the correct equation, right? Oh, I wrote the wrong one up there. That's what you're saying. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. But that's the. Um, these are the correct coordinates. I wrote the next problem, didn't I? Uh, negative three x uh, squared plus five. We have a negative two comma negative seven, a negative one comma two, a zero comma five, a one comma two, a two comma negative seven. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it. Think that it was wrong. That that is correct. The graph is good. Okay, make sure it's um. This one looks a little pointy up at the top. Make sure you round it up at the top a little bit more. I know this one's kind of a steeper one, so it looks like it should come to a point, but it should be rounded out up at the top. Uh, questions on that one? Good. Number five here. Let me take a look at number five. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Mm. Number five. Who had number five? Mm. Good. It opens up because the A value is positive. Good. That's exactly what I wrote up here. It opens up because the A value is positive. Good. The three is positive. Number six. Who had number six? Ben, you had number six, right? You sketch the graph there too. Good. The domain of any quadratic is always all real numbers. The range depends on whether it's a minimum point or maximum point. Do you see how that's a maximum point? That means everything below um, is the y value. So that means everything less than or equal to the y value of the vertex. The y value of the vertex there is negative 2. So it's y is less than or equal to negative 2. There's my answer there. It's always all real numbers for the domain. The range is y is less than or equal to negative 2. Questions about that one? Bay number 7, with number 7. Bay. Good. Uh, the zeros are 1, comma 0 and 3, comma 0. Good. 
one comma zero and three comma zero. I would agree with that. One comma zero and three comma zero on the axis of symmetry is x equals two. X equals two. Things to take into account, remember, may, whenever you write your zeros, it should be the number comma zero, a full coordinate. Whenever you write the axis of symmetry, it should be x equals. So I look everybody, everybody, look down at your answer for number seven. Did you write x equals? Because if you did not write x equals, I would have to take off a point. The same thing is true for number eight. Who had eight? Good. Uh, we got negative one and negative five, and x equals negative three. Let's turn that around. Good. Negative one and negative five, and then x equals negative three. I would agree with that. Very good. Questions about that one? Number nine. Good. We had the formula. We need the formula here. X equals negative b over 2a. So we plug it in. We get x equals negative 1. Let's see if I agree with that answer. X equals negative 1. Yep, I would agree with that answer. X equals negative 1. Uh, watch out. We have three negative signs. This is the most negative signs that you would ever have. Three negative signs. If you've got three of them, two of them will pair up and cancel out. One of them remains. You need to have the negative sign in your final answer. X equals negative one, not positive one, but negative one. Questions about that? Good. And then who had 10? Tyler had 10. Uh, we got X equals negative four. I would agree with that. A is two, B is negative or positive 16. So it's 16 over two times two, which is 16 over four, which is four. Keeping the negative out front, we see X is negative four. X equals negative four. Let's pause for a moment as we come to the end of this uh, uh, page of my key here. Are there any questions 1 through 10? And at the halfway point of the practice test. Any questions 1 through 10 that we have? No? Okay, let's take a look here at number 11. Who had number 11? Number 11, good. Look, she's finding the axis of symmetry and then using that axis of symmetry to plug it back in to find the vertex. She has negative six, comma, whoops, that's not the right page. Get back up there. Uh, this is negative six, comma, positive four. And I would agree with that. Negative six, comma, positive four. Very good. And you see the answer up on the screen. Um, if you have, uh, if you're following along at home, negative six, comma, positive four. Negative six, comma, positive four. That's another weird one that I've got three negatives. You've got three negatives. Two of them will cancel out, leaving one left over. Now, people, let me ask you a question. If you get the x value of the vertex wrong, do you automatically get the y value of the vertex wrong? Yes. So here's the deal. I will have to go through and look at your test and see, okay, if you would have that x value, would that y value have been correct? And I will give you credit if that y value would have been correct for that x value, okay? If you get your x value wrong, but you get your y value correct, if that would have been it, then obviously you, 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 know, you can, I'll give you credit for it, because you did the process right. But if you get the x value wrong, and then you get the y value wrong on top of it, then I, I, you know, I, got, I, I can't give you credit for anything. All right, who had number 12? I did. Oh, that's right, it was on the board here. Uh, so my equation is, y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 3. All right, so um, looks like we found our axis of symmetry to be positive 2. I like that, positive 2. Um, negative 4 over 2 times 2, which negative 4 over 4 is, wait, oh, 2 times 1, excuse me. Uh, negative 4 over, um, over 2 is negative 2, and then we have the negative out front. We do get x equals positive two. Again, let me let me write that out there. A is one, b is negative four. So x equals negative, negative four over two times one. So positive four over two, which is two. That's why we see the x is equal to two. We plug it back in, I would get a four minus four. Oh, wait a sec. Do you guys agree with the two comma negative seven? No, I don't. Yeah. I plugged it in like four times and I still got negative seven. So I, I got to be plugged in. You got negative seven? 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm just asking. Them. Four my, oh yeah, that's four minus eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is, that's right. That's right. Negative seven is it? Sorry. I'm doing my math on my head. Um, two squared is four, and then four times, um, four times two is negative eight. So four minus eight would be negative four. Minus three is a negative seven. Yeah. So two comma negative seven is my uh, my vertex. I know my y-intercept is negative three. And then the other two points that I pick. Um, hey, I would take off a point for this because of this. Are you allowed to choose zero? No, because you already have zero. That's your negative three. Okay. I would do negative one then. Right. You would do one and negative one. Okay. I like the one, the one comma six, uh, and that should be negative six. One comma negative six is good. Let's plug in the negative one just so we see it. Uh, we got a negative one squared minus four times negative one minus three. And that gets us a two. So negative one comma two. See, you see how it, it went up there and we didn't even, we should have seen it up there. It should have gone all the way up there. And you reflected it over a little bit incorrectly as well. This should have been two units away here and two units away there. You see that? Yeah. It's not totally symmetrical. Okay. Questions about that? Okay, same thing for 13. Serenity, didn't you do 13? You did it on your whiteboard though, right? Good. Um, so if we got the axis of symmetry is negative one. Let me jump to my key to make sure everything is correct here. We've got where is that? Is this it? There it is. Um, 11, 12, and here's 13. Good. There's 13. You got it. x equals negative 1. Yep. Good. x equals negative 1. The vertex is at negative 1, comma, 0. Good. And then the y-intercept is negative 2. Good. The two other points, you chose 1 and 2. Exactly what I chose. Negative 8, negative 18. Very good. Yeah, that's a, that's a good response there. It's a good uh, correct answer there. Um, I will tell you this. If I give you a 10 by 10 graph, oh, that's right. I only give you a 10 by 10 graph. No, I'm sorry. And how they send it out past that. Um, if I give you a 10 by 10 graph on the home or on the quiz, it'll fit the 10 by 10 graph. All right. Questions through 13 so far. Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, number 14. Who had number 14? Ah, yeah, the word problem. Now let's go back and read through. The word problem. The height of a soccer ball can be modeled by negative 8x squared plus 32x, where y is the height of the soccer ball in feet um, x seconds after its kick. Looks like they're they're using negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. Good. Uh, negative, negative, negative 32 over 2 times negative 8 is negative 15. So we've got positive 2 as my axis of symmetry. So we kick the ball, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, hit the safe x. Um, Time to reach the maximum height is two seconds. The maximum height it could be, we plug in that two, we get negative eight times four is negative 32, plus 32 times two is 64, so positive 32 feet. Maximum height is 32 feet. Total time in air, you just double the time it takes to get to the apex, it would be four seconds to hit the ground again. So just showing the work up here, um, there's, my, there's my final answer. Good, thank you, Carson. In the van. And then number 15. Um, oh, good. Identify which graph is narrower. It's the G, the 5x squared minus one. Yeah. Can somebody tell me how you tell whether a, a graph is narrow or wider? Good. Closer to zero, wider. Bigger the number, narrow the graph. Right. Hannah, didn't you have 16? Did you have 16? No, I Oh, so I'm sorry, because you had 16. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's uh, the negative 4x squared. Good, yeah. I would agree with that. Good. So there's 15 and 16. Uh, Hannah, you had 17. What did you say for 17? Left three, up five. That's exactly right. Left 3, up 5. Left 3, up 5. Uh -oh. And then what did we say for 18? Who had 18? Joy, what did you say for 18? Um, right, one down six. right one down six. Very good. Yep.
And our last one that we have, number 19. Who had 19? Elena had number 19. That's right. Um, she said that the vertex is at 2, comma 3. Now, I've had a lot of people telling me that the vertex should be at negative 2, comma 3. Because they see within the equation, I wonder if I wrote the equation up here. Yeah, they see within the equation a negative 2. Remember, that is a right 2 up 3. Right 2, that's a positive 2. Good. Just like what she has there. The vertex is at 2, comma 3. And you notice how she centered her table around the 2, comma 3, showing 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the table. That's exactly correct. Very good. We saw the symmetry in the y values, and we should see our answer there. I, for some reason, when I did these keys, apparently I didn't write in the vertex, but there we go. All right, questions on any parts of the practice test? We still got 10 minutes. Are there any questions that you, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make up some problems. So if you've got some suggestions on types of problems, like, hey, can we do another one like number 75? Any, any suggestions for me? Rosalie? One like 11. Yeah, find the vertex. Yeah, so um, get out some scrap paper. You can do this on the back of your practice test if you'd like. I don't care. Um, we're going to find the, um, the vertex of this parabola. So f of x is equal to, um, let me try to make this weird, negative 2x squared plus um 16x minus 20. Find the vertex. I'll give you a minute or two. Go ahead and find the vertex. All right, let's take a look at the vertex. Now, the vertex is the vertex <laughs> is um, I've got to find the axis of symmetry, negative b over two a. Carson, what's my a? Oh boy, why did you do that? Because you weren't doing your problem. That's two. Fine. No. Negative two. What's my b? Oh, sixteen. Okay, so we've got negative sixteen over two times negative two. So that's 16, negative 16 over negative 4, which is a positive 4. Good. Now, that means our axis of symmetry is at 4. How do I find the vertex now, Chris? 
Yes. Can you plug it back in? Yes. So negative 2 times 4 squared plus 16 times 4 minus 20. Now, this is, is this a big number? No. I just, I just made this up. So we'll see. Plus 16 times 4 minus 20. Hey, that's not too bad. Okay. 12. So 4 comma 12 is my vertex. Uh, let's do one more. What other? Somebody give me one more. Sentence. Yes. Like one or two. Like numbers one or two. Perfect. Okay. So um, maybe we'll do this. Um, oh wait. Trying to hide that from people. Relax. Is that Let's take a look. My first difference is, is going what? Minus 2. Second difference? Third difference? Plus 6. Second, uh, sorry, next one. All right. All right, how much do I change going from negative 2 to positive 2? 2 to 6? Plus 4. 6 to 10. Is this quadratic? Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody say bye to the people watching at home. Oh, they were, they were still on there while you were bullying me. Bullying? Yes. I'm trying to get you to answer questions, Carson. Oh, I, I, As I'm over here whispering, they get